All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the You Like That podcast with me. My name is Adam, and I'm one half of the You Like That podcast. Uh, my name is Jack. I am the other half of the You Like That podcast. Yes, you are, son. Guys, we are back again. Another week, another new uh, new film. Um, it, we're looking at Wrong Turn today. The reboot that I don't think anyone asked for after six movies in a franchise, but we've got it. Um, Nobody except anyone who worked on this movie knew that it was happening. Yeah, no, and I still think out. they probably still didn't even know that it was no. this. So um, we're going to be diving into that as our main review of the week. Uh, we'll jump to our news as we always do and hit up those questions at the end like we always do. A um, little bit of a slower week in the news. Uh, so we'll save some time, hit these little small things that I've got. Nothing really big has popped out. Um, something I've... <laughs> The weird one that's, that's come across for me is uh, a GameStop movie is apparently in the works. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, all to do with the whole uh, Wall Street bets and the whole GameStop shares going up and fucking any hedge big, funds. Any big news event <laughs> will be a movie eventually. Basically, it's someone going, yeah, I know how to invest now. And I've also seen The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Wolf, the Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street, Street multiple times. Let's do the same thing with GameStop. Yeah. And I think it's just going to be a movie for Redditors. And memes? Yeah, probably. I wonder if it'll be like nice to Redditors or if it'll paint them as <laughs> what Redditors are actually like. Yeah, hold it on neckbeards. A lot of uh, a lot of this and that going on a lot everywhere. Of Discord so, admins. Yeah, so we're gonna get that, and I, you know, I guess people will maybe see it. <laughs> Fucking no, who, who knows? Um, well, what's it gonna be? Well, a guy on Reddit was like, woke up one morning and was like, I wonder if this will work, and then it worked. Yeah, they were just like, cool movie. <laughs> yeah, hey, let's fuck up. There'll be lots of dramatic hedge funds and shit. Lots of dramatic crane shots of Wall Street. It'll be a stretch and a half. Flying everywhere. Yeah, it's gonna be. uh, It has to be a comedy of some sort. It's just, it's just silly. It's a silly idea to have a movie. It's just going. Oh, something's happened in the world. Let's fucking make a movie about it. You don't need a movie about this. It's just GameStop stock. It's not a movie. There's not a movie movie in it. No. Jesus Christ. So, and they'll, they'll make it, and it probably won't even be fucking correct to what the uh, what actually happened anyway. Um, but uh, the upcoming Blade movie has finally assigned a writer. Uh, we're getting Stacey Osei Kufour. Uh, she was the writer for the Watchmen series. The uh, Not the movie, the series. People like that a lot. Yep. Um, I believe uh, Disney and Feige and that said they didn't want to hire anyone other than a black woman. Or just an African American person in general yeah, to yeah. write this movie. Yeah. Um, props to them. That's mad. Yep. They've got a really good writer here. Apparently, that series was fucking sick. Yeah. yeah. In the Watchmen series, I never saw it because it's just not for me. Yeah, no, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. But I'm very keen to see Blade in the MCU. Yes. So that's gonna be that's gonna be sick. So hopefully that um, that starts kicking off pretty soon, um, and we'll probably get that in the next four years. Yeah, it's a long time away that one. More than likely, there's too much. There's too much on their plate already to get under. Um, more news for the Snyder Cut. It's received an R rating in America for strong yeah. violence and language. Okay. I think it's just because it's a four hour movie, so they're like, there's a there's a there's a limit. You know, if you go over this limit of swears or or of fight scenes, it has to be an R. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to be fuck all. Yeah. No. And. I think America, they just hand out hard R ratings for yeah, a lot much. of things. Because here, MA is one fuck. You're allowed one fuck. Mm. But you can show titties and violence. Mm. For some reason, swearing is the hill they die on here. Whereas America, yeah. generally, they don't like titties. They don't love blood. Yeah, it's very. It's, it's a very different... It's super different. It's, like, it's a, both countries are super yeah, different. Yeah, classifying movies is so different across different countries. Because yeah. you go and try to find in Australia... A movie that we've branded as R-rated. Yeah. A lot more of your horrors that are, like, really gruesome. So, like, your um, fucking Saws, some of your Saw movies, uh, maybe the, the new Halloweens and that. Just anything that has a lot of gore, they'll go, yeah, nah, a bit too much. Yeah. But anything normal, like this, we'd probably give an M15 rating over here. Not even MA, just M15. No, yeah. Yeah, 15 year olds can watch it. Fuck it. Why not? I hope Batman just says fuck every sentence. <laughs> That'd be mad. That that that's the cut that we wanted. It's just bad for going fuck. I'm not gonna say it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, so. nah, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, 
uh, we got a trailer for Pacific Rim The Black, an animated Netflix series on Pacific Rim. Uh, I don't care. That's fair. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the only news I've got, so we're going to talk about it. That's fine. But I, I ship this idea. Pacific Rim is something that I think can now only work as a Japanese-style anime. It's big robots and big kaiju monsters. Yeah. It thrives for that market to just be like, yeah, just make it a cartoon and it'll work. It's gotta be, yeah, yeah. No one's gonna go, oh, it was shit and it was this and that and look bad. Just get... Because the first one, the, about the robots were really slow and meandering and then the second one, it was like Transformers. And the second could, one was... They could do flips and oh, stuff. God. I love the first one. The second one was absolutely appalling. Yeah, I didn't see What the they did, one. you're not missing much. I was um, like, yeah, the first one's fine. Okay, yeah. cool. But I, I, like watched, Charlie, I watched the trailer for this now for the anime, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that actually looks like you'd see that scrolling through Netflix as a Netflix original anime. You'd be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. It'd probably be cool. Yeah. So that's coming. Um, I wanted to save this bit to last because it's more Spider-Man 3 news. Willem Dafoe apparently spotted on set of Spider-Man 3. Yeah, of course. Apparently he's finished and he's fucking wrote the script and sucked off the director. Yep. Everyone in it's, Hollywood. It's not going to stop. Movie. Nothing is going to stop for Spider-Man 3 until we get it. Until we we'll get see it. Yeah, we'll see a trailer, it we see anything. It. We'll see it when we see it. So, but if it's coming out in December, you would expect a trailer first quarter. We'd expect a title at least by now. Yeah. At least a, a, some... Just a logo, maybe. Even. Home is where the home is. At home. <laughs> in my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tom Horn has also said that this is the most ambitious standalone superhero film. Yeah, well, we're fucking he's every cunt these dogs in it. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. So he's like, oh, you read the script and you're like, you can see what they're doing and you know they're going to succeed. And it's like, Tom, just shut up. Just Speed tell something movie. else, man. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, they haven't told me if Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield's coming back. I'm like, of course they're not going to tell you that. No, nah, God, no. They're not going to tell you that to the last I second. I wouldn't tell him anything. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't tell him how much cheese I have in my fridge. <laughs> you don't want that getting out, man. Which is not much. Yeah. Moment. So, fuck, hopefully we get something Spider-Man related soon and just not the internet and Twitter going, Whoa, well, it depends, oh, this person was there. Depends how Strange plays into WandaVision. Yeah. Do you want to briefly touch on WandaVision for a sec? It's good. Real good. Real good. So episode five is out currently. Um, I guess we won't spoil it. No, we won't spoil it. We won't but spoil it. if you had doubts in the first three episodes, like I did, just and stick like with I it. like I did. Because the exact middle point of episode four, it starts getting good. Yes. And then episode five is one of the best episodes of TV I've yes. ever seen. So, yeah, stick with it. But WandaVision is fucking killing it. And yeah. it's, 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 it's so weird to see something like... You've seen Marvel movies play out of the last ten years... And now seeing it in an episodical TV weekly release yeah, show. Extremely different. And you go, holy shit, it's the same formula, but they've spread it. They can still do it. In a series. But yeah, we were, I don't think we'll see anything Spider-Man related until... Yeah. Brumple Stippy Copper Bopper shows up in WandaVision <laughs> for three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. At the uh, the last, last episode, right. last frame, with one word, probably, and you'll probably, probably just say... Yeah. Multiverse. Watch my movie next year. Yeah. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> but yeah, WandaVision is sick. If you guys haven't started watching yeah, it, it gets better. Get through the first three episodes and gets then a lot better. it explains it. And then you go, oh, big cameo in that too. Um, and that's it for the news. That's it for the news. Uh, slow week. Everything's. Nothing's coming out right now and fucking we're stuck seeing wrong turn reboots. So with that, <laughs> let's get into our review of wrong turn. Um, so the quick synopsis of this uh, reads, Despite warnings to stick to the Appalachian Trail, hikers stray off course and cross into land inhabited by a hidden community of mountain dwellers who use deadly means to protect their way of life. Suddenly under siege, the friends seem headed to the point of no return unless one man can reach them in time. Have you heard that before? You have. Because this movie comes out twice a year. Yep. So Did we this... really need another Lost in the Forest movie? So... Wrong Turn. This is the seventh entry into the Wrong Turn franchise. Wrong Turn started in 2003 as your uh, DVD B-grade horror gore fest that is just dumb. Yeah, I remember and, seeing it at Blockbuster a lot. Yeah, because you got one every two fucking years. Yeah, exactly. So your whole year going to be going, didn't they do one? Why are they up to six of them now? Oh, God. 
How much lore can there be? Fucking, we'll get, I'll get to the recap soon. Um, so this is a reboot of the 2003 Wrong Turn, um, serving as a seventh entry into the franchise. Uh, it does have a secondary title as Wrong Turn, The Foundation. So it's it's a weird fucking whack around they go. It's a reboot, but it's also the seventh. But it's fucking confusing. Um, so uh, Wrong okay. Turn, The Reboot, directed by Mike P. Nelson. It's done nothing. Yep. Uh, written, though, by Alan McElroy, who wrote the original Wrong Turn. Okay. So he came back to rewrite his own movie. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Very fucking long movie. 109 minutes. But we say that... I feel like we say this every week. It felt a lot longer. Yeah, this one dragged. <laughs> it dragged a lot. This drags. Um, don't know the budget. Don't know the box. I'm sure it's not much. Uh, Rotten Tomato score, 56% in the critics. 63% in the audience. All right. I'll give it that. Um, starring Charlotte Vega, Dane Bradley, Bill Sage, Emma DeMont, Dylan, uh, Dylan McTee, Daisy Head, and Matthew Modine. Um, no real big names, probably bar Matthew Modine. One of them is Game of Thrones. Isn't he? No. <laughs> One of them looks a lot like a guy from Game of Thrones. Don't think he is. Problem is, I don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> Did you just see him just go? He looks like he could be in Game of Thrones. Yeah, the, the main king cannibal guy. He looks like he's from Game of Thrones. Ah, yeah, okay, nah. He's kind of looks a, like Hodor, but smaller. Maybe he was. He he was the only one that sort of had a bigger track listing as well, but nothing that I well, noticed I, yeah, that I, was huge. I recognized him, but didn't recognize him. Mm. Um, he doesn't have the beard in uh, in real life as much. Yeah, right. So I think that sort of uh, shadows it out. Um, so this is a reboot movie. Now, would you like me to quickly recap the full franchise before we talk about sure. this movie itself? All right. <laughs> I'm going to recap the whole uh, Wrong Turn franchise. I watched a 20-minute video recapping the whole thing to sort of see what similarities there were to the original. Because Wrong Turn 1, you can't find anywhere. It's, not, it's not on the internet. No. It's literally wiped from the internet. You can. What, I found a kill count video of someone that just has the kill count yeah. and has m- most of the movie. And I was like, okay, I can kind of piece it together. Because I was going to watch it for reference. Yeah, you can't find it on DVD it. anywhere. Two There's... to six are all over the internet. They're all on Amazon yeah. and stuff. But yeah, number one. <laughs> Just gone. Yeah. Not not around. Very strange. And apparently somebody's tame one in the fucking thing anyway. Um, so I'm going to recap you the six movies here. It's very it's very short and quick, but I wanted to have a bit of... Because I, I haven't seen any of the wrong terms. Nah, right. None of them. Had no idea. I had the like, well. I had an idea of what I was going to be getting into in this. I was wrong. But uh, so the first movie, Three Brother Cannibals, um, uh, called Three Finger, One Eye, and Sawtooth, uh, inbred cannibal mountain men uh, that are just simply hunting and killing teens that wander nope, off into the mountains. Not in the reboot, huh? I'm just going to chime in and say, in the reboot or not in the reboot. So those three, not in the reboot. Not in the reboot. Um, Basically, they uh, kill these bunch of teens and two of the brothers die in the first one. Uh, so, only three fingers, the only cannibal left. Yep. Uh, second movie, a reality show, is filmed in the mountains. Okay. They are hunted and killed by Three Finger, who we find uh, has a family now. Yep. Has a mutant kid. Yep. Called Three Toes. Oh, good. Fucking... Not very original. Not a very busy day in the writing room for those names. They're going for Alan. <laughs> It looked like a fucking Alan. Such a product of the time, too. The uh, reality show. Like, that's when the the boom was hitting. Like yeah. Around 2004, 2005. So. Yeah, it was crazy. So, uh, the whole thing is just, again, uh, they hunt and kill these people. Uh, by the end of it, Three Finger and Three Toes is the only cannibals remaining. The rest of his family is killed off. Then we get to the third movie. Three Toes is now grown up. He's a bit more older. As probably in his hope. mid-teens. Yeah. Um, Did any of his toes grow back? No, believe it or not, still three toes. It's good for him because he doesn't have to change his name. The premise of that one is a bunch of prisoners are being transported from a from a prison. Yep. So they uh, stray off course. Bus gets fucked up by some tripwire, as is tradition in these films. Um, three toes, the son, dies like instantly because he's a fucking idiot and doesn't know how to hunt people. Yeah. So these prisoners kill him. They behead him, to which three fingers finds him. Has a bit of a cry and then goes on a rampage and goes to kill all the uh, prisoners. Three Finger ends up, end up dying at the end. 
So now all the cannibals are dead. Sure is not. Because <laughs> there's three more movies. This is where it's get, it gets funny, though. So the fourth movie is a prequel. <laughs> yeah. So this shows you the... Uh, the backstory to the to the inbreeding of the cannibals. So Who they cares? were it was a lineage Who of inbreeding cares? chemical mutations. Who wanted this? They were also kept in a sanatorium. <laughs> all three of the brothers. Um basically no, they, they lived in the fucking woods and fucked their sisters <laughs> no, and now after they this have... they did that. Oh, they killed everyone in the sanatorium sake. first, and then the whole thing is a bunch of teens go and search this abandoned sanatorium. They're still there. They kill them all. Whoop de fucking do. That's the fourth movie. The fifth movie is the sequel to this one, but it's still a prequel to the first one. I'm so annoyed just I know. this. Like, I'm fuming. And this one was right just basically now. a straight gore fest where the three brothers just kill everyone at a festival, basically. Um, and the sixth movie, this is the one where everyone was like, this movie shouldn't exist because nobody knows if it's a sequel, if it's a soft reboot, or if it's just up in the air for just being there so it's jigsaw basically the movie jigsaw yeah. but jigsaw actually tells you when something is set this just goes oh, yeah, they're listening. still alive the three brothers the three cannibals but it has to be set before the first wrong turn but it doesn't make sense because of the fourth and fifth movie so they go we don't know what it's if it's rebooting just the first one yeah, with the yeah. same people yeah or what um, but basically, this teen gets inherited a resort. Um, well, they were probably just like nobody saw the first five, so who cares? Well, apparently, it was just a growing like these movies were a growing thing. How? <laughs> I don't fucking know, but apparently, people fucking like this. Wow. Um, I can think this of two teen, people who don't. <laughs> this teen uh, was apparently related to the cannibals, so they ended up helping the three brothers to kill all his friends. And that was that. That's the fucking recap for the Wrong Turn franchise. Now, we got the real reboot, the 2021 reboot of the first movie, the 2003 movie. Yeah. So, Jack, tell me about Wrong Turn. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say, but just tell us. Ah, it's just shit, isn't it? It's just a shit modern horror movie that hits every single beat of a modern horror movie. The twists aren't interesting. The characters are despicably unlikable um you've seen every single one of these characters in every single american horror movie since 2010 yep um it's such a like you can tell it's a reboot of a 2003 movie because it feels like it was made in 2003 um it's scared of violence it cuts Mm -hmm. away from kills um which is why you would go and watch this movie is to see you know clever practical effects or even cg as long as it's an interesting kill yeah. If you see someone's head get squashed, like whatever, you're like, ah, oh, cool, mm-hmm. fine. Doesn't do that. It's scared of that. It doesn't do that. Yeah. Um, the twists aren't good. The fake twist ending isn't good. None of the performances are good. None of the none of the settings are any good. It feels like they <laughs> had two areas of this nature preserve. Yeah. Booked for a week and they just fucking stayed there. Um, and then they went to a Renaissance fair. And shot only at night because the Renaissance Fair was still running, so they had to yeah, shoot it at night for this course. little village. Um, 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 um. Oh, it's in, infinitely forgettable. Just it's just a fucking terrible movie. It's bad. <laughs> okay. On to questions, guys. Thank no, no, you no. For some... Okay. I'm gonna hit you with. This wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's fucking trudge. I also didn't mind it. Okay, yeah. But I had reasons for why I didn't mind it. Yeah. So, I agree on everything. This is not a great movie. It's better than the Blair Witch remake. I didn't like the first Blair Witch, so for me it's better, but that's for another episode. Um, The... There's so much wrong with this movie. Um a lot wrong with this movie but there's reasons as to why i liked certain parts of this movie so this movie already felt way too long than it said it was going to be and i felt that this was two movies i felt like this was split in the middle of the movie yeah uh in the what is it it's like the first half an hour they're all captured or dead i think it's i i 
think I put it to about the 45, 50 yeah. minute mark. And you're just like, oh. Now. Okay. So here's, here's, where, here's where it went different for me. And this is where I sort of changed myself and went, oh, actually, okay. Mindset's a bit of a change. So we know about Wrong Turn going to this movie. I didn't. <laughs> you you briefly sort of knew. I, I sort of watched that. Recently. You sort of knew yeah, that yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a cannibalistic inbred. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. fest type knew movie. That so you yes. knew that's all you knew. Yeah, not a lot of cannibalism in this movie, is there? Exactly. So. <laughs> not any, actually. Going into this movie for me, I was going, okay, I'm going to see inbred mutants. You were waiting for the Cannibalistic, beats. fucking no sense plot bullshit. I'm going to have a bad time. The movie did well to not incorporate what I was expecting. It's better than what the other one sounds like, for sure. Yes. They do a better job of so, making something out of nothing. Because this is coming from the same writer of the first one, I feel like he's sort of new in this uh, modern day that we're in, that showing inbred mutants is not something that's going to get you silver screen time. It's not something that you can put out to an international audience for a full two-week run in the cinemas if you have inbred cannibal mutants. Yeah. Uh, I think that was him going, okay, let, let me let me change that and flip it around to something a bit more believable. Yeah. Because what we get is more believable than having inbred mountain men that are just killing for sport. Yeah. I like the change that we got from what I was expecting because it almost made me go, good movie? Ah, no. Yeah. But I was about to flick the switch and go, uh, uh. But the issue was that the first 45 minutes kept me believing that it was that movie. Yeah. And even up to the the courtroom scene, mm. when they're all walking out and they're going to take off their masks, yeah. I was expecting like... You're expecting. Very distinct deformities. Something fucking however weird. However they get their names, whether it's Snaggletooth or whatever. Yeah. You know, I was expecting that, but then no, uh, someone who I thought was on Game of Thrones walked out. With a very, very well-maintained beard. It's a gorgeous beard. The You wonder how work. he does it. The line work, yeah. it was pristine. Have you seen M. Night Shyamalan's The Village? Yes. Yes. So this movie is essentially that. Basically, yeah. to the way we get to the ending. So, in in more talks of the, 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 the change to this, of what I was expecting to be the shitty-ass cannibalistic inbred movie to being more of a, this is just a different civilization, village community, that is a bit fucked up, but... Not the fucked up that I was expecting. So these are the points where I go, I have to give it credit yeah. for being modern. Yeah, yeah. And not being a straight-to-DVD, B-grade type horror movie. This is something that people can go to the cinemas and watch as a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. it's not schlock. It's not schlock. It's not outlandish. It's believable. Yeah. It's it's just not portrayed properly. No. Nah. Because it's cut so weird. And it leans very heavily on it's, tropes. You have underdeveloped characters. You you're, don't like. You, you don't care about, to begin with. That, Besides the maybe line, the main girl, because everyone else just, is just expendable. The line of dialogue where the one girl yells at the other girl about like morality and what's right and wrong. And I wanted to fight. You're a, you're right, a, I facepalm myself. Yeah, and she's like, you're a rich white girl. The girl who's yelling at her is white. <laughs> Yeah. And a uh, college master's degree student as well. Like, yep. It's a very strange line. So the movie goes off and... It's trying to be smarter than it is. It is. It is. It, it tries to be smart and it tries to back itself to... Well, more or less to redeem itself. Because I feel like this is also coming to be like... I know what people think about our movies. Let if they remember you, them at all. If, if people remember it. Yeah. Let me give you this instead to try and bring more people and maybe try and revisit the old movies. Now, what I will say for this movie, if for people that, the select few people that are fans of the Wrong Turn franchise will not like this in any way, no. shape or form. Yeah, because it's not. This is not their movie. Because they got six movies of all inbred mutants yeah. and just a gore fest, this is instantly if not what, what they want. So they're going to berate this movie 100%. Yeah. But to the outsider who doesn't know of the old franchises, they'll go, 
yeah, it was just an okay horror movie that I'll go, yeah, I'll forget about it, but hey, I saw it. Yeah. Nothing we say really matters because in our session there were a bunch of 16-year-olds <sighs> and clearly fucking loved it. This is what... Fucking yeah, hell. This is what these movies are for. Halloween is more for us, older mm. guard, yeah. because yeah, there's a lot of throwbacks to the movies we grew up on, yeah. which are movies still two generations before us. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like Halloween feels a bit more mature, even though... For sure. It's just a straight slasher. Yes. You know, it's it's not silly, it's not campish. It's yeah, just... whereas this is absolutely given 16-year-olds something to do for two hours. Yeah. And they loved it. Because and, there's, you know. there's brief jump scares, but it's not... It's not the jump scare that's to get everyone. It's just to get those 15, 16-year-olds to go, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck off. And then they can go to school on Monday and be like, Oh, my God, Stacey. I saw the scariest a, movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. And Stacey was a little bit. She wet her pants. Like, you know, yeah. that, that's what these movies do. Yeah, exactly, it's exactly. schoolyard tales. And that's what it is. So we can touch on the... Uh, that's not what our podcast is about. We're here to tell you whether movies are good or bad. Exactly right. This is a bad movie. <laughs> it's a bad movie. So let's touch on what you said before about uh, the movie not wanting to uh, focus or give the screen time to the violence. Yes. So as we know from the elders, it's very upfront. It's very confronting the violence that you get in those movies. This one, it is, as you say, you're about to get it. And then the camera cuts yeah. so there's out no, of frame. Yeah, there's no impact, but there's a lot of dead bodies and stuff. There's more afters yeah, than they, there is uh, uh, during. Like, they made models of dead bodies yep. and, like, mushed up. They went and got a bunch of offcuts from the butcher. Yeah. You know, why, why can't you show something hitting your, exactly. your doll? Like, yeah, it'll look a bit stupid, but it's MA anyway. <laughs> and it's just it's it's just such a fucking coward act to because you're not how many people fall in holes in this movie and you can't see what's in the oh hole God, until they're fuck. in the hole and four? it pans around I think it happens four times yeah that four or five yeah and it's just a hole and you're like oh that's unfortunate yeah. because you know why that's an incredibly easy gag to do yeah someone falls in a hole there's a gym mat under there and yeah it's you, incredibly cheap to do too yeah, and, and then you, you stop filming a... you put the camera somewhere else and then you set up fake like, yeah. sticks and stuff. So it's it's just cheap looking. It's a cheap looking movie, but not in a fun way. Yeah, like um, I would prefer a cheap looking movie with stupid kills, like throwing dolls off a of cliffs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd much prefer that. A hundred percent, because there's there's recipes for there to be good kills in this movie, but yeah, it's good it setups. just cuts it away. Yeah, like the first thing we get spoilers and all this, but I don't think you care anyway. The the massive tree rolling down the hill. Which looked awful, by the way. Absolutely horrendous. I thought that tree was a lot smaller than what it was when it finished. Yeah, I was like, and like oh, that's a big tree, but it, it changes, did not seem changes that way. Changes position on the mountain that's on, like yeah. so many times, like because they're showing each character yeah. diving out of the way or whatever. And then when it showed <laughs> how, points, it's like, it's but when it showed how big that tree was when it was at its stop motion, and it crushed the dude. Yeah. It's like, no, you were like, oh, that's a different tree. <laughs> yo, I don't care how self-sustained your village is. No cunt has the strength to be able to push a tree like no. that down a hill. No pulley system you've rigged up with rope and twigs. And the only person, yeah, and the, the only hill. person you see like running around is Ruthie, the little kid. Yeah, she didn't fucking do it. Fuck no. Maybe it just ha- happened. It was just a freak accident. <laughs> and when I look at that, I go, "Why didn't they just run to the side?" Yeah, they had so much. You think if something is they coming so far down, down the hill, yeah, l- plenty of time. Yeah. Just no, oh, I just run to the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another horror trope. People running away. Oh, God, they tripped. Yeah. You know how easy it is to not trip over? <laughs> it's very. You've been walking, so easy. Yeah, if you've been walking for 25 years of your life. <laughs> like, I've, I did a lot of running in my childhood, just Don't around like paddocks it. and everything, and even through bushy areas where you can't see much. Never tripped up. You know why? Because I look where I'm fucking going. Yeah. It but not these guys. Simple. No, they fall because that's the horror fucking recipe. Yeah, and then the community they go to is just a nice little village. It's not scary. Yeah, so let's talk about the village. That they're they... all just like getting along. So they're called, they're called the Foundation. And the idea behind them is these dozen or so families before the Confederative War in America uh, sealed themselves off in their own little township to, uh, in case of the fall of America, um, be able to preserve themselves and build a new nation on what they wanted. Yeah. 
for, for, for the new America, um, which is all everyone contributes. It's self sustainable. There's no sickness. Everyone's happy and everything's fucking hunky dory. Yeah, there was a big speech where it's like, who, uh, whose society is the real barbarians? Yeah. It's because you have phones. Yeah, and that's just a real stab. Phones stabber. make you savages. Yeah. Ah, and it's just a full stab at, at modern world now. And the internet is bad. Yeah. <laughs> There's and a lot of that. It's very through that, through that whole thing, it's when you're you're waiting for the whole. Oh yeah, but we all fuck each other, yeah. so we're all related. Yeah. And you're I, like, that's kind of implied. No. It, it is, but I think they go. That's why they they named how many families there were when it started. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. there's about a dozen or so. Many, yeah. So there's enough to pair mm, off. Yeah. Maybe eventually it'll come back around, and then it'll start. Yeah. But it's a few years down the track. You know what's heaps better than self-sustaining? Yeah. Menu log. <laughs> press, <laughs> press a button. <laughs> food just shows up at your it's, door. It's fucking a revelation now. How barbaric's that? It's it's not very barbaric. You can just have a I quarter eat. pounder whenever you want it. Yeah, but then it's it gets it becomes barbaric when uh, they're a little bit late, and then there's a very upsetting yeah. email you got to type to menu log. And then you got to poke his eyes out with a how long. Neither of us are doctors, right? Correct. If you get your eyeballs burnt out with yep. a pointy just at the end of a tree, yep, you're not you die, right? <laughs> no, because I because burns are more or less cauterizing a wound. So it's like yeah, 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 right. It's like if you uh, you can die from pain though, surely. surely it's it's like if you cut off your finger, up. if you just burnt off the tip of it. The bleeding stops because you've cauterized the wound. Yeah, right. That's why lightsabers, there's no blood. Yeah. Arms just fall off. Yeah. There's just no blood, no nothing because oh, it's all hot and warm and there's nowhere for the blood to go. Yeah, right. So that's sort of like, eh, but I still think it's like maybe up for infection. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, when we see all these fucking weird burnt out people in the darkness, they look almost like zombies, essentially. Yeah. And you've got to think... That was almost unsettling. It was. That was the only point in the movie where I was like, okay, there's something here. Yeah. Only it was an unsettling it, yeah, moment, I don't for love, sure. I don't love an eye injury, but... Yeah. So their, their, like, prison system is one of two things will happen. You're either sentenced to death or you're sent to the darkness. Yep. Which is quite literally, it is a big uh, black... Room, I guess, in the mountain. Sort of like a cave. Sort of like a it cave. It looks like a cave. They've just carved a bit into the cave and put a massive gate at the front of it. Yeah. And they basically just burn out your eyes so you can't see anything, but it's also pitch black, so it sort of defeats the purpose anyway. Yeah, it seems like an extra step there. Yeah. Like, that, that seems barbaric. I guess you wouldn't. Someone would have to go and light all those candles. I yeah. mean, they're not going to appreciate it anyway, so you might as well do the eye thing. Fucking why not? It's a bit less work. Um, so yeah, as we're getting to sort of escape at the end, we see all these uh, people that have been sent to the darkness, and they're all very zombie-like. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, withering away to skin and bone, and they're they're briefly fed. But I sort of feel like, how do they get fed though? Do they just sort of leave it at the gate, and they just kind of come to it? Because yeah, I think throw it in there. Some of them are deaf. Yeah. And they all can't see. So. They wouldn't be able to hear someone go, Supper time! Yeah. Get your dinner! You're not going to get that, and they're not going to go in there by hand and just start handing out fucking meals. So how are these cunts getting fed? Man, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was lying! Tonight, have phones. <laughs> tonight, I'll be eating um, an apple. Yeah, anyway, the girl pretends to join the community, but she doesn't join the community. It's a ruse to leave. Yeah. So she leaves... Really good. That's your movie. Her dad comes to rescue her. Um, he gets captured, and we think, oh, she's turned herself over. She's now part of the community because her boyfriend is now fully fledged with the community. He's like, no, nah, I'm staying here, man. This is sick. This is mad. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, a pretty good time. Well, yeah, it was mace sort of a mace. Realistically, it was his job anyway. It's what he was going to do. Yeah, kind of. If anything, this is a better way for him to do it. So he's just like, no, oh, I'm cool. This is easy. As I've been mad. so desperately trying to make these characters like likable or good. The amount of times they say he runs a non profit. <laughs> yeah, you're just like no one fucking cares. She brings it up she's like literally on top of him with him inside her. <laughs> and he's like, You know why I chose to do non profit? It's like 
Okay, we get it. You're a yeah, good bloke. You're, you're a non profit. Cool. Wow, that's mad. How we'll are you paying be, the yeah. bills? We'll be sad. How are you paying die. the bills? We'll be sad when you die. Show me your bills. How are they getting paid? Yeah, exactly. Not by menu log. Oh, God, no. Might be a menu log. Well, that's driver. what he's doing on the side, yeah. Fucking maybe you'll get the bills paid somehow. Um <laughs> uh, and yeah, dad comes up, goes to save her, gets captured, then they escape. Yeah, he does a fucking shit job of saving her. And uh then you get your first little backwards twist of the uh, hillbilly folk at the town that are near in the forest and they go hey now we're trying to help you we told you not to come up here now we've got to save you yeah you fucks that was a nice little misdirect it was a misdirect yes. but then it was sort of like how do they get so far in a truck without any other traps like these yeah, people made it out that's what I mean about only having two locations yeah. there's no scale of distance because they didn't run far from no. the, the settlement and, and the guy, like, they're always talking about how steep the mountain is and how treacherous it is. And it yeah. all, it's a three-day walk. This guy's just in an old F-150, and he yeah. seems to just drive right up to the gate. Like, he just fucking knew. Like, he takes day trips up there yeah. for fun. Yeah, so why didn't he do anything about it sooner? Because, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, everyone's dead. No one's worth it. Yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> but the uh, the ultimate piss take of this is, is the ending of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all fucking three of them she escapes, whatever. gets back home, and uh, with her dad, safe and sound, and she Life walks into peachy. walks into a house with the groceries. Stepmom's there, and her brothers, her stepbrothers, or whatever. And we see the village king there, not with of little France. Ruthie, yeah, in normal clothes, yeah, where they somehow got a minivan or an RV from their mountain. Got her address and infiltrated the way to have dinner because they're moving in, possibly. That would have been really hard without Google Maps and Facebook. For people that don't venture outside... Yeah, exactly. How do you know so much about the outside? Yeah, it makes no sense at all. It so makes absolutely no sense. Why bother having a fucking settlement if you're just going to go for... It's just to try and make him scary. Like, you can't avoid him. But if you think about it for more than 0. 0.4 of a second, you're like, well, how? Yeah. <laughs> how? Yeah. We find that she's pregnant now as well with his child. Oh, yeah. For whatever reason, she hasn't already gotten rid of it. Yeah. That's a bit of a fucking... Hey? Well, she initiated sex with him. Yeah, I know, because that, that was her plea bargain. It was, hey, I can stay here because I'm a healthy no, young no, no, woman. but yeah, when her dad turns up, they're all, like, cuddled up, and then she gets on top of him and starts doing the do. Yeah. That seemed like her decision. Seemed like she enjoyed it, like... Yeah, I know, but... Do you really want the mountain man baby? No. So Where well, the put, fuck are you keeping know. it? Might have been an accident. <laughs> pull it out, wasn't. Pull out, yeah, pull out is not that effective, dude. The whole reason she was there was to fucking make kids for him. Yeah, my joke kind of fell apart it when did. I started making it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I'm going... I'm what sticking with it. <laughs> you fucking hell. Um, I, I would really like to not talk about this movie anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, we'll get to the end. Um, uh, the movie's <laughs> left with uh, oh. a uh, end credits type uh outro this isn't a this isn't a fade to black here's the names of everyone that worked on this movie it's uh she's agreeing to go back to the uh to 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 the to the to the settlement with the uh village king um they all hop in their convenient rv that works and uh they're about to drive off she's like just promise me you won't you won't touch my family ever again yeah and and not knowing that this was called wrong turn colon the foundation when Mm. that popped up i was like wow they're really they're settling up the sequel, like they're announcing yeah. the sequel, like you know, some movies are yeah. Iron Man will return in, yeah, or Civil Occupation War. Rainfall Chapter yeah. One. I thought, oh wow, they're already doing that, that's brave, like, yeah, they really think it's going to make money, but no, it's yeah. actually quite a funny misdirect, yeah, it's literally just what their working title for the movie was. Um, so the credits are rolling, the RV is driving away, and then you get to, I kind of liked it in a way that it's sort of a a little outro thing while the yeah. credits are going. And it's an actual ending. Yeah. You know she kills him and gets yeah. off. Yeah. The RV crashes die. and then you see people fall out of the RV and she's just stabbing them to fucking bits. Yep. Ruthie comes out and then they just hold hands and walk down the road together for the whole of the credits. Now you left uh, before it completely finished. Yeah, yeah. I, I stayed so much. just in case because I'm like, is it going to be like that? One little thing after they walk off off screen. Betcha there wasn't. There fucking wasn't. (laughs) 
<laughs> the cinema woman was cleaning around me. I'm sitting here like a yeah, simple Yeah, that's when I left. She came in and I was just like, yeah. oh, all right, I guess I'm we're sitting done. twiddling my thumbs going, no, no, there'll be something after this. I'm sure of it. And as I was walking out, I was like, I bet you Adam's going to stay for the whole thing. <laughs> I just had to. I just, I'm like, no way. Like, so I wasted my time. Don't stay till after the credits. Once she kills him, just fuck Don't off after that. Don't go see it. What do you mean, don't stay after okay, the credits? Don't fuck. go in the first place. All right, unless you're 16, don't go see it. Um, uh, yeah, okay, that's wrong turn, guys. It is in cinemas everywhere. If you want to see it, see it. But if you listen to us, you're probably not going to see it. We're a pretty good basis to tell you what, You've seen it. You've what seen to see, what not to see. Movie. You've seen it. Yeah, it's the same formula. It's just fucking trash. Um, all right, guys, let's go to questions now. Let's wrap up this episode because we got a few to get through. Like we always do. So as always, guys, Facebook, Instagram, the lines are always open on a Sunday or Saturday whenever we post a funny meme to uh, comment on. Uh, drop us what you want. Movies, unrelated, personal, anything. We don't care. Um, so let's start off with our Facebooks. Uh, Jess sent us a couple. Uh, so first one, do you enjoy talking about yourself or listening to someone else talk about themselves more? Has this informed your dating history or who you're friends with? Uh, the second one. <laughs> I, I, don't, I do not like to talk themselves. about myself at all, which is weird given that I have, you know, I'm on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the questions are like, answer this thing about yourself. <laughs> yeah. But that, I don't hate to talk about myself, but I'm, I'm just a quiet, introverted person. Yeah. I would like, like, I'm a great listener. I'm mm. a very engaged listener. I'm good at like peppering in little questions. Yeah. Yeah. Because A, I'm interested in B, it. It avoids me talking about myself. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just painfully dull. Like, I'm sorry to break the illusion if any of you think I have some sort of life. I don't. I go to work and then I go to bed. Well, it's fair. It's, I mean, it's a fucking, it's a good life. It works. Um, I, I don't really know. Like, I can, I don't enjoy talking about myself, but, you know, I like sort of, you know, saying what I'm about. Oh, I, I like... don't enjoy talking about myself. <laughs> Fuck you, oh, you <laughs> cunt. I was waiting the whole time. <laughs> oh, I knew, looked in your face and I'm like, oh, he's going to fucking say something. I had that fucking joke in the you. bank for so long. Yeah, well, there it fucking is. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's sort of like, well, you kind of have to eventually talk about yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's just about conversation, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Eventually, yeah. it's going to happen. It's either they're going to start talking about themselves they could, they could also be the same person that don't want to talk about themselves. Yeah, then you're fucked up. So you yeah. get those two people that are like, I don't want to talk about me. Do you want to talk about you? No, I don't want to talk about me. Fuck you. Do you like movies? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I do a podcast, but that's, it's not about me, but it's not about me. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's informing your dating history or who I'm friends with. It's oh, just... yeah. God, no. No, that's never. No. Nah, no. Never the way. Um, do you prefer being Big Spoon or Little Spoon? I like both. I really like both. I'm a Big Spoon guy. Only because my arms die like that. Yeah, I'm quite a large I can't, man. like, lie on my side and have this arm sort of crushed under me because I'm like, well, that's gone. Yeah, yeah. See you <laughs> fucking in two weeks, maybe. <laughs> when it comes back to life. I'm quite a large know. man, so being the little spoon is quite awkward. Yeah. Cause... Sometimes it's nice, but I won't do it for long. Yeah. I guess big spoon. I like being a big spoon. Yeah. I suppose. Big spoon life. <laughs> Um, what is one of the most unrealistic things about mainstream porn versus real life sex? All of it. Ex- fucking everything. Have you seen porn? <laughs> None of it is correct. It's horrific. It's sex it's, is not that horrific. No, and it's, porn is just like borderline assault. Yeah, it's horrible. And it's, it actually has maybe maybe worse storytelling than Wrong Turn. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably fucking does. <laughs> I'm You're not stuck. watching it for that. Hour. I'm stuck in the fucking washing basket. I think porn is actually quite dangerous. Uh, it teaches all the wrong things. I also think you know, sexual education in schools is also very dangerous because it teaches you the ideal life in the 1940s and that's it. Yeah, um, yeah, fair. But porn is not the answer because because if a dude can't keep a rock solid greasy dick. <laughs> You know, well, yeah, for, it's for just... however long a porno goes for, 41 minutes. Okay, yeah, sorry. That's my most unrealistic they're, thing yeah. is how fucking long they last. Yeah. Excuse me? Uh, no. And they're going to go, oh, there's something wrong with me. And then their girlfriend is going to be like, yes. oh, he's bad in bed because he can't last. Or oh, he I can't was that keep person up. once. Okay. Yeah. But then yeah, I realized, soon after, not I was like, like that, oh, dude. wait, I'm not a porn star. Yeah, yeah. 
Sex is sex is so much more than just jackhammering into someone. Yes. Yeah, so... There's a lot more of a process. So if if you can't just jack your hammer into someone for 26 minutes, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, it's you're completely fine. Incredibly normal. Just watch your porn for just uh, having a quick bat. Don't think about it. Just go, that's a nice vagina or that's a nice dick. <laughs> Be done with it. I fucking hate porn, dude. <laughs> yeah, so fuck. Everything about porn is unrealistic versus yeah, real awful, sex. awful, awful, awful. Um, uh, and her last one is what is a common misconception that people have about you before they get to know you jeez I don't know they, they all think I'm a stoner they think I too many drugs really yeah yeah I can say that actually yeah <laughs> uh, when they see my photos and they see that I squint in all of them when I smile he must be baked no I just squint when I smile I don't know people don't really tell me what they're thinking of me what they think I am well, you sort of wouldn't get that until a bit down the line. We're like, you yeah. know, when I first met you, I yeah, thought... Yeah, yeah, I don't really get that a lot. I think I really am just what I appear as. Mm. I'm a bit of a cranky prick. Yeah. And I shoot that across in jokes. Yeah. The only time I say that... Like, the only reason like, I say the I drugs like I... one is because when someone brings up, like, weed or something, and I go, oh, yeah, I've never done it. They're like, you what? Yeah, really. And like, you never? I'm like, no. <laughs> but you look... Like, I know. I look like a hobo, but never done it. It's a conscious decision. <laughs> Fucking hey. So yeah, that's that's the one thing. Oh, I, I think it's the one thing. Maybe people might think other things, but I don't know. Uh, tell me, no, don't do that. That's <laughs> horrible. I was going to say, tell me what you think of me. But, <laughs> Comment uh, below. Don't. What do you think of please him? Please if this is your first that. episode, what do you think of Jack after this? Uh, I guess people think I'm crankier than I am, more cynical well, than I am. If people follow you on Twitter and then meet you, yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. They go, man, he doesn't like much, but. Fucking weird bands. Uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, if you don't whatever like works. me, I don't care. <laughs> um, uh, all right, let's go with MK. If you woke up in a cannibal village as a cannibal, what would be the first body part you'd eat of a human? Uh, I'd get something like quite fleshy that doesn't look like anything. We were discussing it. A lower thigh. Bit, a little bit of lower thigh, yeah. Because it's it's meaty with a bit of fat. A bit of muscle. There's enough a bit there. Of gristle. So there's enough to work with. Yeah, and and you can just cook it till it looks like a steak. You slow roast that. Cool. Bit of rosemary and thyme. Yeah, yeah. Garlic. Yeah. Eight hours slow cook. Nah, nah. Just cook it like I cook everything. Prime thigh. Just put a fry pan on high. Fucking yeet it in until the smoke. Whack in the air fryer until the smoke alarm goes off. Then it's done. That's how you know you've cooked a good human. Yeah, no, but anything that doesn't really look human. Yeah. Like you it, could pass the thigh off. Yeah, if, just a, if a piece like, of beef. If they're eating little toes like chips, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't want a part of that. They look like little toes. Yeah. yeah that's the one thing about being a cannibal. No, no, I'm a cannibal, but I just, I don't like the look of it, but. Yeah. How do you ease into being it? Like, how, how does that start? Well, it's as you say, is it that you just like the meat itself or do you actually like knowing it's a body part? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I think that's what it comes down to for most. <laughs> Hey, yeah, just, you're just curious good. about food, or yeah, you're a monster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and Jacob, uh, MySpace or Tumblr? Ooh, MySpace did more for me because I met Brooke, and now I do this podcast. Yep, there was a lot in between, but the, yeah, <laughs> the basis of, of it is follow yeah. Brooke on MySpace, and now we do this podcast. There was 13 years in between. Yeah. Um, but, uh, mate, I was fucking... I was a star on Tumblr, mate. Very, um... Definitely two different time periods. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. MySpace I was a lot younger with. Uh, but, you know, that was more or less the start of the, the social networking era. Yeah. I guess. I, for, that was everyone's first thing. You know, it was massive. It, it was, I definitely had... I want to say the most fun, designing your, your, your profile page, fucking going in and changing codes and that, thinking you're a fucking hacker. Yeah. Because you just found something going off. You put a diagonal and then a dot, dot, dot and this. And you're like, oh, I've made a space. Yeah. And you just fucking... I remember... This is this is how fucking dumb my page was. You know when you had like your section like about you and it was like uh, favorite bands? Yeah. I listed every single band in my iTunes library. And there was surplus of 500 bands. Anytime I hear a new song, it's in my thing. That band's in there, yeah. Just... For people to like sort of stumble upon your page and see one band they like and they want to add you and talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Never worked, but it was a fucking fun time. Yeah. 
top eight choices was also a fun fucking fight. Fucking ranking your friends My based God. on how much you like them. How that is shallow. such a funny concept. The best what ones. What do you think about it now? Well, it was uh, the best ones were uh, when you were in a relationship, but you still wouldn't put them as your number one. Or just before someone was in a relationship, you're like, I bet you they're going to shut up. Because you see because the move. they switched. They switch places and you're like your best friend. And, you're like, and you go, mm. oh, I was number one, now I'm number two, and there's a girl in front of me. My number one was always fucking? CKY. Are you fucking? Number two was always Bam. And then number three was Brooke. So, him were my number one. Yep. I remember I spoke to a few bands like when they like when they weren't as big. Because it was sort of like that was the platform to get new music out. Yeah. I remember commenting with Psycho Stick. Yeah. That was mad. I spoke to Tim Roth from Into Eternity. Nice. Um I think I spoke with uh, Arsenal Alexandria. Oh nice. Which was fun as well. Yeah, right. Because that was like, it was just before they released um, their first album, Stand Up and Scream or whatever it was. And, you know, it was just like, I think they had like 2,000 friends or something and not even anything massive. So it's just the thing where they, you just comment on their page and you just get a comment back and you're just yeah, like, yeah. Holy oh my shit. God. You feel so famous. Yeah. Tumblr, I don't know, Tumblr was just a bit more. Tumblr was the, was the angsty anything. tanny it was for just me. Like, yeah, here's this thing I like the look of, so I'll just reblog it. Yeah. It was it was like early Twitter for me too. Like I would f- just write stupid jokes and hope they took off or whatever. Yeah. Um, Tumblr, I that was definitely my thing. Like after MySpace died, Tumblr was where I was at. Oh, dude, I was on well, Tumblr. Sorry, early Twitter so, as well uh, because I was on Twitter from the start, like when Twitter first started. Yeah, so yeah, I was right, like... Right, right. I don't really twist to Twitter. And that was big before it was massive and everyone was on it. And then I just sort of died off it. And now I have it, but I don't fucking use it properly. Um, but Tumblr was my thing. And that's where I got my handle for all my social networking. Adam Zangers was, was Tumblr birthed that for me. Yeah. Mine was Bozo Creep from a King Parrot song. Jesus Christ. And yeah. I also got my dick out on it. So... That was the start of that. Fair. I definitely took Posting some shirtless selfies. Photos of my penis on the internet. Um, I had a good one because uh, I had a drop dead varsity jacket, the mm. the green and black kitty yeah. brains one. No shirt underneath. Well, no, I, I just did the back of it, so it was sort of like the you know stand a bit in the middle of the room, have your poses yeah, on the yeah, back, and I sort of have it exactly. the kitty brains as the focus. Yeah. Oh, so many retweets, whole, yeah, uh, nice. fucking reblogs. It was prime. But I met more people through Tumblr than I did. So did I. I've made I some I made some very good friends through Tumblr. Yeah. Um, people around Australia and that, and some people I still talk to every now and then. But uh, Tumblr was a fun place. It was it wasn't as much a shit community unless you had like really shit people sending anonymous yeah, posts. I, I had a girl travel travel to see me because of like sight unseen just because of Tumblr. Yeah. Like we would message on Tumblr. And she came down just because we were both like CKY. Like, yeah, no, you crazy. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, no, you you, you get that. I have a good friend from uh, Newcastle, uh, Hannah, who follows us on here and all that as well. And she was the same. Uh, played games and liked all this and that. Yeah, yeah. And I met her at Soundwave for the first time, and then I went up to Newcastle and we just had a day just hanging out, and that was mad. Yeah, me it's just totally, meet people, and it's totally sight unseen because none of it was like, all like like this was none of like. You didn't just meet people to try and get a route. No, you no, generally no. like make friends. Yeah, because you have this thing. They were common platform, interests. Like, it was literally just common interests. Here interest. are my exact interests. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There was yeah. Tumblr meetups and everything. I never went to a Tumblr meetup, but they were there. You didn't get in the ball pit at TumblrCon. Nah, nah, we didn't get there. Um, yeah, Tumblr for me. Um, all right, let's jump to the uh, to the Instagram questions. Uh, let's start with Brooke. Uh, what is one thing Wrong Turn did right in the film and one thing you would change? Uh, I would change it to not be generic. Mm-hmm. I think I would... I, I don't like the, the village idea. I don't like that at all. I, I don't know what I would do yeah. differently. Maybe I would do cannibals, but like... Uh, Less mutated? Yeah, not like... Not... Not, not make it like cannibalistic. You characters. can make it like make it like the Green Inferno, where it's literally just like Amazonian cannibals. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just normal people. They just fucking don't well, give a just shit. Make it fucking paranormal. The ghost turns people funky, mm-hmm. and then the Do group not make all, it paranormal. And then the group all like turn on each other. But the one thing it did right, yeah, I quite like that. The misdirect at the end, I guess, setting mm. up a sequel and then not. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a cop out answer because it's the last forty seconds. <laughs> I know, I know. I made it to the end. Yeah, that's true. Hey, um, well, for me, the one thing it did right was turn away from 
New Zealand cannibals yeah, inbreeding right. in that. I think just inbreeding is just such a fucking uh, just a wrong thing to film. Yeah, it's I don't want inbred stupid. cannibals. I want possessed cannibals by the forest. Yeah, no, that'd, that'd be cool. That'd that'd be cool as well. Um, and to change uh, the whole first forty five minutes of the film. Yeah, it, yeah. If uh, if we're gonna have the village scene at the end. Uh, or the, yeah, the, that might as well just be half. the movie. Yeah, let that be the first half. Let's establish the foundation as what it is, yeah. and then get to that. So we know that's what we're leading into. Yep. Um. All right. Next one. Favorite Jackbox game. Quiplash. I fucking love Quiplash. Gaspionage. Yeah. We in the two percent club, baby. Yep. It's my record. Two percent off the uh, correct answer, nice. and I will claim that everywhere I go. Uh, also, a uh, trivia murder party when it comes to the dictation part when you have to type. As yeah, fast as you yeah, can. yeah, you're good at that. I don't know why, but I just I boss Chronic it. Chronic texter. <laughs> um, uh, next one, best cheesy slasher horror flick, House of Wax for the win. That's her one. Man, Freaky falls into that now, I reckon. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it does. It is. Fre- it is definitely a, bit, a slasher, yeah. and it's not like it's cheesy, but yeah. it's so fucking good. But it's quite clever. It's so good. How it plays with it. Um, I, I really like that early Netflix wave, like your, your Sinister, um, your... Uh, fuck. Hush. Hush was quite good. It's, it's not really a slasher. That's more like psychological. But whatever. Mm. Like, uh, Fuck, I can't think of any more. It's hard, but, eh? I'm trying to think of it now. I just don't know about... Yeah. Just like a cheesy slasher one. But I mean, I'm the biggest Nightmare on Elm Street diehard... You could say they're cheesy. I could give you any... Yeah, of course. Cause they're definitely cheesy. Of the time, like with what they could do. But if I go cheesy, I could just tell you Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Yeah. Uh, it's just just because it's a brilliant movie. Cabin in the Woods is taking the piss out of cheesy yeah, slash well. movies, but it's also a really good slash movie. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, can, <laughs> that's kind of the ultimate answer. Yeah. I, Cabin I, in the Woods. I need should... you to watch Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that'll drive your appreciation for that movie and to how it represents... Teenagers yeah. and hillbillies yeah. and horrors. Yeah, especially since Evil Dead is my favorite movie of all time. And <laughs> Alan Tudyk is in it, and he's brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> um. All right. And uh, her last one is: If you could start your own business, what would you do? I would just have a bar. I've always yeah. wanted a bar slash like live venue. Yeah. Yeah. Would be mad. Mine's just a cop out of just a clothing line. Yeah. I've had ideas for it These multiple are both times. These very attainable goals. <laughs> like it is. Like I have files on my computer of shit that I want to get done. Yeah. But it's just the money. Yeah, everything costs the money. Money is the, the issue. And I'm like, I don't want to register businesses and start paying tax. I'm like, ah. Ah. Just let me just make shirts and just give them to people. Just Fuck. Dream, dream about it. Um, all right, let's go with Chelsea. Uh, what family is worse? Wrong turn or Texas Chainsaw? Probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, the Gein family, although they're not named, because nah, they're all in on it. And I guess because it's real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's nothing as well, but I, I don't know. I think worse. I probably would say Wrong Turn just because it's inbred cannibals. Yeah, but the dad is the cop in Texas Chainsaw. So who do you go uh, to? Yeah, yeah. Who okay. do you go to? You can't go to the cop. Yeah, so he's in on it. Yeah, okay. and the house is just grosser. Yeah, fucking gross disgusting. House. <laughs> so fucking disgusting. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll I'll go with you on the Texas Chainsaw. Um, uh, odds of your survival in Wrong Turn? Absolutely zero point zero zero percent. I have said it before. I am not a survivor. I will find the easiest way to die very quickly. Hundred <laughs> percent. Purely because I ain't going hiking. Yeah, that's true. You wouldn't be there in the first place. Bro, as soon as I saw them waking up, 8.30, we're going hiking. I got fuck off. Before my heart attack, I did that. I used to quite enjoy doing that. Like, usually it was, like, on the safer trails and stuff. But, like, yeah. drawing room walks, like, you just park, you leave your car somewhere near the entrance, and then you kind of figure it out. I can get it. I get that it's a good thing. There's a lot of good views, yeah. especially for Australia. Great views you can you can get to in yeah. that. Uh, beautiful, worth it, sure. But... I've seen enough horror movies. Yeah. I didn't do it to like appreciate nature either. But like, also cause... just the fear of losing my footing somewhere. Yeah. And then yeah. being stuck somewhere and knowing I'm just going to die because no one knows where I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very safe. No. Because <laughs> I would never tell. Yeah. I would never tell anyone I was going. Yeah. And then like 
Because you don't think you'd have to. I'm just no. going for a walk. And I just put my headphones on and just listen to horrific death metal. Yeah, next thing you know, you're being so dragged into listening. the fucking yeah. bush. If someone's marbles. chasing me with a chainsaw, I don't know. Yeah. It just sounds like a HM2 pedal. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, no, I nah, but gen- that. genuinely, I'd probably put myself at like a 70% mark. Yeah, right. Um, probably same as very up myself for it, but I don't know. I feel Falling like into a pit of smart spikes enough. is not a fear I thought I had until this movie. When that girl falls in the pit of spikes, I was like, ooh, that's genuinely like... Yeah. That's quite an unnerving thought. Yeah. Uh, but it's also just the fuck around when he just comes up and shoots her in the head with the arrow. Yeah. You don't see it. Yeah. You see the arrow poking out of like the frame. I think that's why they made her so annoying because <clears throat> like, they were just going to shoot her in the face anyway. Yeah. And that's probably them going to the audience. Hey, it was look. also feeding on her line of, you said you'd never leave me yeah, again. Yeah. Fuck you. And he just keeps doing it. That was pretty funny. Yeah, but you did the same thing, but... Yeah, fucking hell. Uh, no, you're fucked. Yeah. You have four spikes throughout your body. If I take you do? off, you're going to die. Yeah. Sorry. Right, <laughs> gone. Fuck, fuck off. Um, and her last one is, would you live in the middle of the woods? Uh, yes like, or no? I really like the idea of it, but I do like conveniences a lot i do like menu log i yeah i, I do like living near a barber <laughs> you know like i like yeah i can get away I, I, I can get away with the grizzly adams look yeah because I, I basically am yeah but yeah. i think that there's limitations for how i could stay there for like i wouldn't mind it serenity if it's a nice nice woods yeah as a uh, retreat not living there yeah i yeah. couldn't live out there yeah it, uh I'd probably no. I'd probably go mad because I'm I'm one of the people where I can hear noises at night. Just well, your house is haunted area. as fuck. I discovered that on Friday. Your house is one of the most haunted houses. It's ever not. <laughs> it's literally if there's a little bit of wind and this thing is set wrong. It just goes. That's a ghost. Ghost. It's all it is. Straight up ghost. Fuck off. I, I am definitely afraid of spiders as well, so... That as well. They Living just... in a log cabin, you know how many fucking huntsmen there? Bro, there? you take as much pesticides as yeah, you want. I... They're finding their way in. Yeah, I ain't doing that. And then they're trapped in there with you. Yeah, no. I'd... I would go there for a holiday, but I wouldn't live there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely with people as well. Um, uh, be, 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 uh, let's get uh, Alyssa. Um, would you rather get called Daddy in Bed, but it sounds like a chipmunk... <laughs> Or get called your Instagram handle in their normal voice. So I requested to Alyssa that these just get more fucked each week. And she's already done it. She's started doing it. Yeah. Um, my Instagram handle is just my name. With my birth year at the end of it. True. So I'm fine. But in the normal voice. So you're just getting fucked and you just hear Jack Lawless 93. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I'd be more focused at the task at hand. <laughs> Where like yeah, trying to do a good job. Yeah, fair. Whereas in a chipmunk voice, I'd just be like giggling. <laughs> That's I'd just fair. Yeah, I'd probably go with the Instagram handle as well, just for convenience and being like, I can ignore that. Yeah. That's just a minor so inconvenience. It's much less intrusive. It would make you feel sort of famous in a way. Yeah, hell yeah. Just getting called by your Instagram handle. I don't know my real name. Adam Lankers. Um uh, if you were stuck in the Oz outback for twenty four hours and could only choose one person to be with for help, who would it be? 24 hours isn't that long. It's not at all. I reckon you could just do it. By yourself would be fine. Yeah, you'd be thirsty and you'd be quite warm. The Aussie Outback isn't that bad. No. Nah. But in terms of who I, would, who I would rely on for survival, probably my brother because he's extremely practical. He has that gene. He got it from my dad. That he can just he looks at something and he just knows how it works, so he just he can just fix anything. Yeah, okay, fair. That gene fucking skipped the hell out of me, because like I look at the door handle and I'm like, Bro, it's magic. <laughs> no, there's it's fucking, fucking more to this. Yeah, there is more to this. If that door handle falls off, I'm like, I live here now. <laughs> I'm not getting out. I do not have that. Yeah, this is my life so now. I would need someone very practical to like break down a tree. <laughs> yeah, fair. Construct something. Yeah, I don't that, know. That ain't my bag, baby. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird one. I'd say Brooke just to have sex that night. That's that's on your mind. It probably would be. Oh, I don't Jesus know. Jesus Christ. What else am I going to do in the outback? And if you know it's only 24 hours as well, you'll say, nah, it's a night out. Time yeah, to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make the most out of it. Why not? <laughs> um, I don't know. It depends if there's anything like at stake. Like, is there, like, am I in any sort of threat? Uh, I guess. Or am I just stuck there? Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't think the Aussie Outback is like as dangerous as it's people make it out to be not. too. Like yeah, there are dangerous animals, but like the Australian Outback yeah, but is very you're large. For it. Yeah, exactly. Like if you just get dropped in the middle of the Australian Outback, chances are there's just gonna be fucking sand everywhere. You're gonna be yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bit of fucking bit of bit of red sand, maybe a couple bush trees. You'll stumble across maybe a snake or two. Yeah, I mean, really, it's not that. <laughs> if anything, you'll probably actually like it more than anything. If you're if you were a foreigner and you were dropped in the outback for twenty four hours. Oh yeah, this is Australia. You got this is okay. like the movies. Yeah, this is nice. I like I like very much. I like your country very good. Okay, I I I sleep here tonight. First thing I would do is check the menu log range. <laughs> Set your location to whoop whoop. This episode is not sponsored by Menu Log. I'm just very hungry. Fuck yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, so let's hit the let's hit the last one, which is your one. Uh, who do you want your first gig back to be? Yeah, this is. I just should have just asked you this in general because I'm yeah. curious to know. But mine, I, I hope that the Offspring slash Sum Forty One gig gets rebooked. Yeah, Sum Forty One have been one of my favorite bands forever, and I've never seen them. And I was going to go to the Sydney and the Wollongong show. And I love The Offspring too, of course. Yeah. One of my first favorite bands. And that was one of the very early ones to get cancelled. So that's mm. that one's been like weighing on me for so long. Yeah. Yeah, I got to see The Offspring at um, uh, uh, Warp Tour. They were fucking sick. Um, they were talking about just like bands that are coming back, like from the tours that they've cancelled, um, to be able to see Mark and Mook and Romance. Yeah, fucking nice. Because obviously they announced their full comeback world tour yep they're gonna do download and i wasn't gonna to go to it i was gonna go download. just for them like, I, I was just gonna buy a ticket it. and drive up i couldn't justify afternoon. being there all day and having to endure a festival to see them i was gonna go hang out in Parramatta, just like go to bars and stuff and yeah then it could also be <laughs> closer thing, yeah. to set time just walk in that'd be good as well but i'd, I'd much rather them re-announce the tour but as a headliner just stadium or just ah, fuck it, smaller. Play at the Horton. Metro Theatre. Play at the Horton. Metro. Metro, yeah. <laughs> Fucking the amount of emos crying Literally there. Literally the biggest alternative rock band of all time. Yeah. At the Metro. <laughs> Fucking hey, why not? Um, yeah, I'd really like to fucking be able to see them. Yeah, now. that that Parkway tour with Hatebreed and Every Time I Die. I was quite uh, excited yeah, for that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they got announced too, yeah. Metallica and Slipknot. Like, that wasn't even COVID. Uh, yeah, that that's was, right. Yeah, that was that just... Was that was James Hetfield going, no, I'm back on the juice. Fuck. Yeah. And thank God he got through that. And he's in like two again. weeks, and then did another tour. Yeah, it's like he just didn't want to come to Australia. Nah, I don't think addiction works like that. Oh, I think it does. <laughs> I, I think you. Know you what I think you can choose. Is. No, 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 no. They, he went. How far is Australia? They're like, yeah, oh, it's like an eighteen-hour round trip. He's like, nah, fuck it, I'm drinking. Don't. Don't talk about James Hetfield like that, please. I don't like Metallica. Trent got me very good tickets for that too. Like we were fucking on the floor, like the best spot. Ooh. Yeah, that one. That one stings to think about. Yeah, it would I haven't been like to a big floor show in a long time? Because I've think gone. My last one was Post Malone. I've gone back to getting seat tickets. Yeah. So how good's the seat? In older age now, Fuck I'm like yeah. I'm like, I can't be down in the pit anymore. I can't enjoy the show. Yeah, I was on the floor for Posty and he played for like two hours and I was just like, yeah. I am miserable. I was in the seats for Posty. Ugh. Great view. You got to see everything. Perfect for taking your videos. <laughs> Loved it. You get some good shots. But just being at, like, seated now is just, you can enjoy it. Yeah. You, get, you take everything in. That being said, I did get a floor ticket for that Parkway show because... I wanted to be a grub while every time I die I play. Yeah, well, that works for that as well. But um, yeah, um, I haven't seen Thornhill on the Dark Pool, and I'm fully obsessed with that record. I'm very so excited like, to see Agnes Manners for the first time. Grave Mind um, again. Oh, man. I'm a massive Agnes Manners sweater. Um, Matt from Hellions, new band. Uh, they just played in Canberra and Melbourne, and their Melbourne. Wollongong show is not till April, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, with that's... Hands Like Houses, who I'm not going to stay for. <sighs> I'm going to go just for Agnes. Ugh. Yeah. And whoosh, get the fuck out of there. Um, but yeah, I think that's the episode. I think that's the episode I done. fucking should be. Fucking would be. It's really long. All right, guys. That is the episode done for another week. Um, we still have more new movies coming out. Next one looks really good. Yeah. You that's watched, the first time I saw you the, trailer. the trailer. Yeah. 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 That's the first time I've seen anything from it. Anthony Mackie should be Anthony fucking Mackie, good. Baby. Um, I do have to adjust a few things on there. Himself. Like the one after that, which is just apparently not happening anymore. 
and uh, send you that new one to replace it instead. Yeah, well, I didn't even know what the old one was. So. Yeah. We're good. That's good. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening to the podcast. We appreciate everyone liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, good things <clears throat> and bad things. Shout out to you know who you are. Um, Aussie movies bringing in the real drama to the podcast, which we love it. So comment what you want. We don't give a shit. Um, so until next week, guys, we will catch you on another episode of the You Like That podcast with me. My name is Adam, and I have been one half of the You Like That podcast. Uh, my name is Jack. I have been the other half of the You Like That podcast. We're just going back to normal, aren't we? Yeah, uh, I can't be fucked. Fuck the jokes anymore. <laughs> God damn All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thank you.